The battleground is the mind. And so we need to be diligent when it comes to what goes on between our ears. The bottom line is, regardless of how bad or messed up you think your situation is, you are not forsaken. 1 John 4 verse 4 says, Little children, you are from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Saints, the one who is in you, the one who's in your heart, the one who is called Jesus Christ, he is powerful. He's more powerful than the one who is in the world. Now, if you really knew this, if you really believed this, if you are convicted that Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, is greater than he who is in the world, if you believed this, then you would be confident in every battle. You would be confident even when you're under attack. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3-6 through 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Verse 5 says, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. This means every thought in your life should be restrained. It should be bound under the rulership of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. As you think in your heart, so are you. A lot of people are victims of their own thoughts. They are victims of their own thought patterns. And sometimes it's not that God won't work in our lives. Or it's not that he won't move or break down doors in our lives but rather it's the fact that we lack faith. When you lack faith and allow doubt to fester in your mind and in your heart, this in turn creates these negative and often destructive ways of thinking. Now, the Bible in Colossians 3 verse 2 says, Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. I find it compelling that the Bible says, set your mind. We're being told to put our minds in a place where we dwell on heavenly things. We're being told to position our minds to dwell on heavenly things. Set your mind on things above. Doing this establishes a godly pattern of thinking. So ask yourself, why do I think the way I do? Do my thoughts line up with the Word of God? Do you pay attention to what you're thinking? Do you pay attention to the kind of thoughts that you dwell on? The things that influence your thinking? I'd like to encourage you to take your thought life very seriously. Now let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you now, giving you honor and glory and praise. God, you're worthy of all our praise. You're worthy of our adoration. You're worthy of all glory, God. And Father, as we come to you today, we come reflecting on your word, Lord. Your word tells me that I should bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would help in this aspect of my life. Help me to guard my thought life. Every sinful thought, Lord, help me to bring it into captivity. For every impure thought, for every selfish thought, Lord, I pray that you would help me to restrain these thoughts and cast them down. May the Holy Spirit help me to set my mind on things above. Many times, Lord, my natural eyes will only see the mountain 
or the giants of impossibilities all around me. But I pray that you would open my spiritual eyes. Open my spiritual eyes so that I can see the angels that encamp around me, so that I can see the favor and grace that you've placed over my life. I pray that the Holy Spirit would fill me with boldness and courage. Remind me that I am no longer a slave to fear, but I am a child of God. And I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Help us to realize, Lord Jesus, that a true, righteous way of living is what you describe in Matthew 16, verses 24 through 25. Your word says, Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Lord Jesus, you call us to deny ourselves and set aside selfish interest. You call us to take up our cross meaning we need to express a willingness to endure whatever may come for your sake. God, give us hearts and minds that are committed to following you. Give us hearts and minds that seek to exalt your name always, Lord. Give us a spirit of humility where we say more of you and less of me, God. Give us a spirit that desires to be used by you, Lord Jesus, but only if it brings you the glory, only if it brings you the praise. Lord Jesus, in agreement with everyone listening, we praise you. Lord, we adore you and we worship you because you, Lord, were the one who was hurt. You were the one who suffered because of our sins. You were wounded for our wrongdoing. Jesus, you endured incredible pain for us. And the blood that you shed was for our healing. That blood that you shed is for our healing. Right now, Lord, I thank you for the blood. I thank you for the blood that you shed, King Jesus, so that we could be protected, so that our families could be protected so that our children and loved ones can be protected. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the blood that covers us, the precious blood that shields us from evil. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 through 4, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Lord Jesus, we rejoice because you have risen from the dead. Our Savior has defeated death and we serve a living God. We rejoice that you are all powerful. We rejoice that you are a God who can resurrect and restore. Lord Jesus, we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. I call on your name, King Jesus, to be our rescue, be our banner of hope. Lord, you are the reason why we are more than conquerors. You, Lord Jesus, are the reason why no weapon that is formed against us will prosper. Lord, I pray that your presence would always be with me. May your presence surround me always. Watch over my steps, Lord. And while I don't know what's ahead, I pray that you will go before me and give me the grace to conquer whatever comes my way. Lord, I thank you. Be exalted and be lifted high, Master. I thank you for listening to my prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And I count it all done. Amen. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world.
For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Verse 5 says, Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory.